Welcome back to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated, which is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach. We work with kids, adults, and families to help them make health a way of life. We don't just focus on nutrition. We look at stress, sleep, support system, exercise, lifestyle, and of course, nutrition to help our kids, families, and adults make health a way of life one step at a time. I'm your host, Nicole Coyne, registered dietitian and founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition, CrossFit HSN, and HSN Mentoring. I'm also the author of The Healthy Kids Cookbook, 100% kid approved recipes the entire family will love. You can find it on Amazon. In this podcast, we will be teaching you how to take one step at a time to become the healthiest version of yourself. Today's guest is Matthew Brenner. He is one of the owners of Action Karate. They own 23 karate locations in the Northeast area. He recently partnered with Healthy Steps Nutrition to provide nutrition coaching and education for his athletes and families. In this episode, we discuss why he thinks nutrition should be a priority for his karate students and families. We also discuss simple tips to help his karate athletes get on track with their nutrition to improve energy, performance, and optimize health. We recently held a nutrition seminar for the Action Karate family. You can access the recording of this Family Nutrition Made Simple seminar by clicking the link in the show notes. At the end of this episode, we will be answering some of the questions that we got during the workshop. Enjoy this episode. Matt, welcome to the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Hey, thank you for having me, Nicole. I'm super excited to talk to you today. So you guys own quite a few action karate studios to help kids get active and learn martial arts. Tell me a little bit about your background and how you guys have, you know, grown to have quite a few studios up North. Yeah. So my brother and I and our team, we run action karate uh, out in the the greater Philadelphia area. We have um, 23 schools um, and I've been doing karate since I was a little kid, uh, since I was three years old. And, um, and and my brother started it and in, uh, in 1994, but I didn't really get involved for about seven or eight years ago um, when I thought, uh, hey, karate is cool, but I didn't know if it could be like a career or something I could actually do. Even though my brother had a school, actually had multiple schools at the time, I was like, oh, that's cool, but not something I want to do. Uh, you know, I want to, um, you know, be an attorney or be uh, something that wears a suit to work every day. And I had this like almost like idealistic version of what someone who's successful is based on what I saw on you know, Mad Men, uh-huh. right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, he had to talk with me. He's like, hey, like, I know you like kids. Obviously, you obviously like martial arts and you like fitness. And, like, this could be a career for you. I don't think you realize, like, the, you know, the, fi- the, the financial, uh, like, upside you could have besides, like, having something where you're actually making an impact in someone's life. Uh, and, and once you went over that with me and, and I had some internships that were really bad, like, you know, exactly what I thought I wanted, like, you know, in, in big marketing offices in downtown, wearing a suit every day and like a high rise, looking around, I was like, man, these people like didn't seem as happy as I thought they were. And they're definitely not as financially successful as I thought they were. Right. I kind of had this like this perception that you had to be this certain type of person in order to be successful or to be happy. And, and, and I realized that I wasn't it. So I decided to join, to join martial arts and then do it for a living. So I'm really happy now that I've, I've been, you know, many years into it, uh, eight years since I've started my location and, and grown the online, uh, uh, branch of it that, that I made that decision because, uh, it was, it was a scary one. So 23 school, that's incredible. And I think a lot of people in are in a similar situation, right? Like even coaches, CrossFit gym owners, nutrition coaches think, you know, Oh, I'm not going to be able to really make a career out of this, or this is a side thing. This is my like hobby. When in reality, you can make it a business if you, if you want to, um, and impact so many people's lives for the better in the process. How many kids, 23 schools, I can only imagine that's thousands of kids that you guys are touching every single day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So each location, it depends on the location. Some have 300 students, some have, 
anywhere between 150 and 300, depending on the school. So uh, plus we have, you know, they're, we're family oriented. So we have a lot of their families that come in too, which is why for me, being able to talk to you is so important because I can teach these kids and we can teach, by the way, we, we teach adults too, right? But we're, we're about 80% kids. We're very family focused. So I can teach them how to kick and how to punch, how to defend themselves. I can teach them uh, you know, how to have confidence so they don't get picked on or, or, or be able to focus in school so the parents don't get notes sent home uh, that their child wasn't listening or or misbehaving. But none of that really matters if they're not making healthy healthy habits at home. And that starts really in, in the kitchen with the parents. And also parents are just confused about what to do or how to help them, especially when they're picky eaters or 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 maybe they don't have time to make a separate meal for their kids. So that's why I was so excited, Nicole, when I met you and we talked. I was, oh, this is like the missing piece. This is like what kids really need. Like I could provide the the physical, I could provide the, the mental training, but you could do this like other part of the kitchen that, you know, I could probably help with and get some tips and ideas, but not have like that that same uh, like professional advice that, that you would have. I love that. And I love that you're so forward thinking of like, Hey, I can help you. I can, you know, get you better at karate. And we absolutely know that it helps with discipline and, you know, keeping kids, um, you know, behavior under control. So they're not getting those letters home. I can think of a few personal examples of just friends and family (laughs) friends with kids that have sent their kids to karate. And then all of a sudden they are doing so much better in regards to behavior but you're right. The nutrition piece of, of it is often overlooked and kid parents don't realize giving your kids processed foods and sugars is going to affect their behavior and make their job more difficult down the road to keep their kids, you know, having good behavior. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and especially with, with parents, it's, it's more about, uh, just like really confusion, like they're not sure what to do. And like time, right? Parents nowadays have more on their plate than they ever did in the past. Right? Kids are doing more, right? Kids are doing, they're not just doing karate. They're not just doing baseball. They're doing, they're playing golf, like your boys, right? Or they're, uh, they're, they're, they're doing soccer and they're doing basketball during that season. They're doing, you know, piano practice. They have so much. Plus more, more work. A lot of parents are working from home. So they just have so much on their plate, right? And they need things that are going to be convenient, easy, not complicated. Because if it, if it takes a long time, or it's difficult, and it's, it's just it's just impossible to actually apply, right? Just like I was listening to, to one of your shows, uh, the past ones, and like one of the philosophies I love about how to step is that it's like small little tiny things over time, right? And what most people do is they, they say, hey, I'm going to go on a diet, I'm going to cut out carbs, I'm not going to eat any sugar, and I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m., and I'm going to talk in the mirror every day, right? And they try to do all these things at once, and then they just fizzle out really fast. Right. If you guys are like, hey, if we get this one thing, we can accomplish that. Okay, cool. How how can we get the next tiny little habit? Okay, cool. Let's build on that. And that's the foundation to a strong building, right? Absolutely. Um, so, Absolutely. Yeah, and that's really our goal for our kids, right? To talk about small steps at a time. Not we look for we have we have a saying, we look for uh, progress, not for perfection. Um, and we don't want to get bitter, we want to get better every time something happens, right? So whether it's a uh, uh, if you're a nutrition coach listening to this and you're like, uh, you know, and you have a client who, you know, maybe they had some progress the first couple of weeks, but then, you know, they've, they've kind of slid off. Well, that's okay. Because like, you're going to have times where you get up, you mess up or you get bitter, but as long as you're getting better overall, like people get bent out of shape if they had gained a pound one week, but even if they lost six pounds net over the month, right. Um, they, they just look at that one week, they look at the bad thing. But I think if you like focus on the good and the tiny little steps over time, that's how we make, make big changes, right? Especially with kids, like it's easier. Uh, there's a saying, I, I wish I remembered who, who said it, but it's, uh, it's easier to create uh, uh, a strong kids than fix broken men. Okay. Easier to create strong kids than fix broken men. Um, I love and, that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, and I feel, and really for us, that's why it's so important. That's why we're so kid focused because the sooner you do it, the better. Like if I knew all the nutrition stuff that I knew now when I was a kid, ah oh man, like I feel like I'd be in such a better situation. Um, and I grew up with with eight siblings, so one of nine. So I ate uh, uh, hot dogs, can't in the microwave, like not even like a grill, like what you say <laughs> a microwave, like the grossest dollar store hot dogs you can find, um, you know, canned tuna fish and like ravioli. And that was like 85% of my diet. Like, 
only vegetable I saw was like the frozen ones on pizza. You know, like that was it. <laughs> um, but as I got older, I learned like, and and then you know, I decided to become a certified coach, right, for myself. And and and, and yeah, that's why kids need it because they don't know. Like I had, I truly had no idea. Like I barely ever had fresh vegetables. Like super rare. You know, it's interesting. Like so many parents that we work with, I actually just. Um, signed up a, a new person for our nutrition coaching program yesterday. And we were talking and he's 380 pounds. And he's like, Nicole, I have two kids. I need to get healthy. I want them to model the good. Be- I want to model the good behaviors for them. So they're not dealing with this at age 40, like I am. And, you know, when you can look at it from a parent's perspective and, and say, okay, I need to model good behavior instead of, Hey, I'm going to call Nicole to fix my child. Like we should all be doing this together. It's going to help that child be set up for success and not feel like they have to do something special or different than the parents are doing. You brought up two really good points. You said parents are confused and they don't have time. And I a thousand percent agree with you because there's so many, there's so much money out there in the food and beverage industry that companies spend to make their food products look healthy and look good. And unless you truly investigate as a parent and know what to look for, you will be tricked. And I can tell you, me and my husband are tricked sometimes too. Like we'll grab something and then take it home and be like, what in the heck did we just buy? But on the front package, it looked like it was it was super awesome. Great source of calcium, whole grains, good source of fiber. But you don't look at the back and look at the nutrition facts label to see, okay, what is actually in this food and is it balanced? How much added sugar is in there? So while it takes time, you have to be intentional as a parent to set up those good habits and healthy, healthy, solid foundation so that your kids can be the healthiest versions of themselves at the very youngest age possible. And once it's, once it's, you don't know young, it becomes a habit Then it's easy. It just becomes a part of who you are, right? Like, and even for you, Nicole, like part of your identity as someone, uh, you know, who, who loves exercising and, and CrossFit and, and it's just a part of your identity. I'm sure you can't even imagine yourself, like not working out, being a, a couch potato. It's just not, not part of who you are, right? Like me, you know, being in the same situation, it's just not part of, I, I can't even like see myself doing that. And that guy that you have, who's 380 pounds, he might see himself in the opposite way. Like, hey, I'm the type of person that can't lose weight because I've tried in the past. It didn't work. Or it's genetic. Obviously, it's a genetic component. Absolutely. Right. No one can argue that. But there's obviously a lot of stuff you can do to get in the right, healthier direction. Right. But it's like a lot of that, I feel like, comes to like self identity of who I see myself. And if I'm able to like switch that to like, I'm not this person that I think I am, or I'm not this person that people, told me I am, you know, for, it's kind of like when people say like, oh, I'm really bad at math. And they say that over and over and over and over again. And they believe I'm bad at math, right? Well, of course you are, because you said that to yourself a million times, right? But if you don't repeat those things, if you don't say, oh, I'm just someone who's out of shape, or I'm just someone who's lazy, it, the more you say it to yourself, the more it's going to become true, right? So and, and the opposite of that, if you do it in a positive way, then that's just becomes who you are. And I think, you know, you have to focus on the wins because that those successes breed motivation to continue. And, you know, I, when we talk to people about losing weight or getting healthy, especially when we work with families, we have to figure out individually what's important for each person in that family. For I am sure for your high level karate kids, they want to be better at karate, right? Like they want to build muscle. They want to have more energy. They want to recover faster. So let's focus on how healthy eating can relate to all of those things that they care about. If it's a per- busy professional, they want to do well in work. They want to have sustained energy. They want to be more productive. Let's focus on why eating healthy can be important for all of those things. So, you know, I think for every person it's individualized, but you really have to understand why you are doing the hard things because eating healthy, while it's second nature to you and I, it's not a, it's a it's not an unconscious decision for a lot of people. You have to make intentional decisions every single day until you build it as a habit and it becomes a lifestyle. And sometimes that's tough if you don't really understand why you're doing it. And it, as a coach, you and I are really, our job is to learn what is important to that person and why are they doing it? Because it all comes back to that. Hmm. And um, for any like coaches that are listening, I think the why sometimes is, can be misconstrued. Like people will say why they want to do something like that. Why do you want to lose weight? And I feel like the first answer people say is never the real answer. It's kind of like the canned answer, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So if I ask you, uh, uh, you know, hey, Nicole, like, why do you want to be in shape? You might say, oh, because I want to be, I want to be happier and I want to be healthier, right? But, oh, why is that important to you? Uh, because it's important because, um, you know, I want to feel better. Why do you want to feel better? Uh, you know, so I look in the mirror, like, why is that important to you? Look in the mirror. And, he, and eventually it gets down to something, and this is obviously not you, right? I'm just making this up. But yeah. eventually it becomes something like, oh, well, you know what? My sister lost a bunch of weight and she looks really great. And at Thanksgiving time, I want to make sure I look good too. And then that's like your real why, right? Your real why is like, you want to feel good around your family, right? Or you want to get back on the dating scene if that's like your issue, right? Or, or like, you don't want to be seen as like the overweight person at work, right? And it's like more of like your status and what you've seen. And like, that's your motivation. If that's your motivation, that's cool. But you have to remember that throughout your whole journey. And a coach especially has to remember that because when there's downs, which are or always be, there's be times of high motivation when they start and times where they like, they don't feel good. It's like nothing's working and they're at a plateau or something. But hey, like, what's your why? Well, your why is you want to look good at Thanksgiving, right? So we got to make sure we keep on pushing hard or we... You know, uh, we, you, we don't want you to have heart disease like your grandfather or something had, right? Um, so for, for coaches that are listening, I feel like it's really important to figure out what that real why is. The first real why is like when someone says to me, like, hey, why do you teach karate, right? Uh, yeah, like my, my canned answer, my first why is going to be, oh, I really like like helping people and, uh, and it makes a big impact on kids. And that's true. Like, those things are definitely true. But there's always like an inner why. Like my inner why might be like, well, you know, I like being able to stand on my feet all day at work. And I like being able to, you know, my main working hours are four or five hours a day, right? Or like, you know, you know there's other parts of it that, that people usually won't share, but like they're true, <laughs> they're true incentives. And I think getting to that is really what makes people motivated. Like finding out what that really is. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think it's so important. And, you know, for individuals trying to figure out your why and coaches, like you have to just keep asking yourself why, 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 why. And a lot of times what we find it comes down to an emotion, right? Like I want to feel more confident. I want to feel better. I want to have more energy. I want to be more productive. Like all of the real underlying things. It's not, I want to fit into certain clothes. Yes. When you fit into those clothes, how will you feel? Oh, I'm going to feel more Mm. confident. I'm going to you know, I'm going to decrease my risk for like what you said, chronic disease. That's a, that's a huge motivator for a lot of our clients. And from a parent's perspective, it is so important for you to model this behavior for your kids. So they see you doing it and not feel like they have to do something different, which is why I love, you know, encouraging families to get in the kitchen together and One of the things that we did during COVID is um, we have twin 11 year olds and they um, wrote a cookbook with me and it is literally all of our healthy steps, nutrition recipes, like all of our adult recipes that are in this kid cookbook and kids absolutely love it because they see other kids in the kitchen eating healthy. And we get pictures all the time. My husband and I on social media or text messages of kids trying foods that sometimes would be really tough for parents to get their kids to try, but because they see other kids doing it, it, it works out so much better and the kids are willing to do it. So, you know, I think if you're a parent listening to this and you're like, you know, we're struggling with eating healthy and, you know, time is a, is a big factor or, you know, my kids are picky eaters. Why don't you get them involved? Give them, you know, a little bit of ownership. Hey, let's try Friday, try day. Let's have you try some new food that you pick every single Friday and we cook it together and you try it and you let me know if you like it or not. And I just was at, um, we do a partnership with a big gymnastics facility locally. And I go in and every single time I'm there, the kids love me because I give them food to try every single time like that. (laughs) I've bribed them over with food and I am a thousand percent okay with it. And the cool thing is, is it's positive peer pressure, right? Everyone else around them is trying the food. So the kids try it and guaranteed there's at least 10 kids every time that have never tried that food that now are like, okay, I'm telling my parents to get this because I like it and it's healthy and it's balanced. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's not a fight between the parents, right? It's, Hey, you've got someone, the kid taking ownership saying like, Hey, I want to try this new food. And, and as a parent, you don't want to, the last thing you want to do after a busy day at work is fight with their kids about food. Like I get it. But if you can have them take some ownership and be involved in the process and it's a family affair, it's going to make everything so much easier down the road. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And making it, yeah, like getting them involved, I think is, is great. And so I have a question for you, Nicole, which is well, when you go to the gymnastics gym, if you have new foods, how do you can, I'm sure there's some kids that are reluctant. So how do you get them to try it? What do you do? 
It's part of the culture now. Like there's not one kid that doesn't try it. Um, every kid tries it and they get excited about it and they might just take a bite or they might eat the whole thing. I don't really care as long as they've tried it and they're open to it. We know that you you have to try things 12 to 15 times to know if you really like it or not. Um, I'll give you a funny story there. I've been there for eight years, so we've been going there. This is like, they know me and they get excited. And the first year I was there, um, eight years ago, goodness, this girl, she's 16. Now she's going to be a senior and she was eight when I first met her. She only ate three foods and it was like okay. the struggle. Her name is Gabby. She is a, an amazing gymnast. She already has a college scholarship. She's incredible, but she really struggled to put on weight because she didn't eat anything. And it was like a constant battle with her and her mom and just the, the coaches too. And now she's the first one to try something. She encourages all the other kids to try foods. She's eating so much better. She's built muscle. And it really came down to, Hey, getting a, a coach involved, someone else involved. So it wasn't a fight between her and her parents anymore. It was like, Hey, I'm this, this neutral party. That's like, this is the reason why you want to do it. And for the gymnasts, especially they're practicing for six hours a day. Like if they are not fueling their bodies, they're not going to gain the muscle that they're working really hard for. It's going to be really tough for them to recover. They're going to be more prone to injuries. So if I can help them explain the why, they're more likely to do whatever we're trying to do. And you know, I think whatever age group it is, it, you know, you explain it differently, right? Like, hey, you want to have more energy. You want to run faster for the younger girl, girls. And for the older ones, you can talk a little bit more about, you know, other complicated things that the younger ones are not going to understand. Either way, the point is when you have someone else getting involved and being a neutral party so that kids don't feel like their parents are telling them what to do. It's so much easier for changes to actually be made, but everyone has to be involved in the family, right? Like we can't just have a kid be eating healthy and other kids in the family, not eating the same foods. Like everyone needs to be eating the same things, maybe in different portions, but it, it's important that everyone's on the same page. Mm, So you won't recommend making separate meals for separate kids based on what they like. I do not recommend that. I I don't know any parent that has a chef that is a short order cook that has time (laughs) to spend all of the time in the kitchen. Like let's all eat the same things. And, you know, maybe it's, it might be slightly different. For instance, um, we do spaghetti squash with, in our family a lot. We'll do like a salad and then spaghetti squash with meat sauce. My husband will make turkey meatballs sometimes. And we might put pasta and spaghetti squash mixed together for the kids. They might have a little bit more carbs and my husband and I might just have spaghetti squash and a bigger portion of it. But we're eating the same main foods, right? It's just the portion size is a little different. Our kids eat vegetables with every single lunch and dinner. And if there's not a vegetable on the plate, they ask for it. And it's just because that's part of their routine. They don't know anything different. But I would say the earlier you start these healthy habits, the easier it's going to be. If you have a 14 year old, it's going to be tough to say, I've never asked you to eat a vegetable before. And now at at age 14, I'm going to ask you to start eating vegetables. Like you're never too young to start eating healthy. Is there a time that's like optimal? Is this, you start when the kid's like, you know, able to chew? Like when do you usually start making it a priority? I would say as soon as possible. I mean, when you're giving them foods, like we have to realize as parents that Kids need to try foods 12 to 15 times before they know if they really like it or not, right? So giving your kid broccoli one time or a carrot one time and they don't like it and never giving it to them again is never going to help them adjust their palate to know if they really like it or not. And the other thing is, is the way you cook things, the way you season things. I know for me, I do not like steamed cauliflower. I hate it. I think it tastes like mush. I don't like it. But if we put it in... Um, the oven and roast it or the air fryer and it's a little crunchy and we add a little Gibson seasoning salt to it, it tastes absolutely delicious and everyone will eat it on our in our family. So I think as a as a parent, you have to look for different ways to cook things um, and get the kids involved in that process so that you can really understand do you do is it a texture thing or is it a taste thing? Like how can we start getting you to eat more things than just two foods, chicken tenders, pizza and you know whatever other junk food that, that might be popular. Mm. So what about if the, if like the kids are on board maybe, but you have a tough time with like your spouse or loved one getting on board, like they're the picky. How, how do you go with that? Cause that's like an adult, right? So like, what do you suggest in that situation? 
Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, you know, if you're asking your kids to do something, you got to model it too. And even if it's just, you know, a bite or two, again, trying foods different ways. One of the things that we do um, with parents and when we work with families is we screen people before we have them sign up. And I'm sure you guys probably do something similar with your karate studio, right? Like, I don't want a parent thinking that they're going to pay us uh, an amount of money for nutrition coaching and this magic thing is going to happen, right? Like you have to be willing to do the work. And if parents are not willing to, to make those changes, then I don't, I don't want to set a parent up for failure. And I know that parents have to be on board for kids to be successful with healthy eating. And I know this because I did not used to do it when I was first opened up healthy steps nutrition. I, I share this story often, but um, there's a, a family I was working with in Boca Raton and both parents were obese and their kid was obese. And the, the parents were, they hired me to come into their house and help the kid with nutrition and exercise. It was before we had had our physical location, our gym. So I would go in and I would talk to the kid about nutrition and we would exercise for 30 minutes. And I did this multiple times a week and it, it was, we weren't getting anywhere. I would go in the kitchen and there was boxes of donuts. I would go in the pantry and there's literally every type of pop tart in the pantry. It looked like Publix pop tart section. <laughs> and I remember at one point looking at the parents and I said, Hey, next week we're going to start cleaning out the pantry. Every single time I come, we're just going to take one box of something and we're going to clean it out so we can start adding more healthy foods in so we can set you up for success. And the kid was a little reluctant. The parents like just kind of looked at me and and I was like, all right, well, we'll see how it goes next week. But th that's what we're going to do. I'm going to set this plan. So the next week comes and we go into the pantry. I'm with the kid. The parents were not in the pantry. And I said, all right, why don't you pick a box of Pop-Tarts that we're going to throw in this trash can? You know, like let's clean out some of the, the junk that's in here. The, the kid is like eight years old. He's not buying the Pop-Tarts. It was the parents. So he grabs it and he's like, I'm not throwing it away. And I said, well, we talked about it. We're going to throw it away. So I, you know, throw it in the trash can. He punched me in the stomach. He punched me in the stomach. I looked at him and I was like, okay, what do I do now? Uh, so then I, I go out and I'm like, listen, I grab the parents and the mom throws up her hands and she walks out of the room and she's like, I can't handle this. And I'm like, man, we're in this situation because you guys are enabling this child who is going to be set up for failure as he gets older. Because if you look at the research, if kids are obese at a young age, it is directly going to impact their risk of obesity at an older age, right? And it, the research is there. So like you as a parent have to do the hard things to set your kids up for success. And at, at that point, I ended up stopping. I stopped working with the kids. I'm like, you know what, if I don't want you guys to continue to waste your money because you're not willing to make changes and I'm not going to be able to do anything with this child if you guys are continuing to enable him and buy the stuff that's not going to be supporting what we actually talk about every time I come to, to the house. And, and it's unfortunate, but that was honestly on me that I didn't screen that, that family and let them know from the beginning, hey, mm -hmm. you you guys have to be on board with this. And if you're not on board, we're not going to have a good relationship and this program's not going to work. So it, it was a very great learning experience for me. I won't make that same mistake again, but I, I think it, it shows and it's an extreme story, but it, it shows you that parents are the ones that are making the buying decisions. You know, if, if you are a parent and you're struggling with their kids to eat healthy, grab a third party to help you hire someone to help you, but be willing to put in the work because it's not, it has to go beyond a conversation, right? With a coach. Yeah. First of all, it's a crazy story. Second of all, we got to get you into karate class and how to defend against the punch to the stomach. <laughs> uh, right? I, I needed, <laughs> I needed your skills to defend the punch. I didn't, I had no skills to defend a punch. <laughs> now you're walking in every house, like putting the pop tarts away and your, your hands are up or like on guard, like what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> man, that, that, that's nuts. And, um, for, for kids, especially like one of the things, or I guess really, cause the, the, the moral of that story is not about the kids, about the parent, right? Like yep. kids not buying anything. So one of the things that you mentioned that I think is similar to what we do and might be helpful for someone listening is that uh, we do what's called um, upstreaming, where we'll talk about what the challenges are going to be in the beginning. That way they, they expect it. And when they come up, it's not like, oh, look at this challenge I have. It's like, oh, wow, 
uh, uh, they call me Mr. Brenner. So like, Mr. Brenner is a mind reader. How do you know this is going to happen, right? So Francis will say, uh, hey, in the beginning, right now, Johnny's really excited about karate. Like he's super pumped, he's really into it, but it's not always going to be that way. In fact, we're purposely going to make it difficult for him. And he's going to come to you and he's going to say, hey, this is too hard. I don't like sweating. I can't do it. I can't figure it out. And he's going to whine and beg and, and tell you he doesn't want to come. Okay, kind of like a new toy. No matter how fun it is in the beginning, kids are going to be very excited about it. But eventually, it's going to sit under a couch somewhere, right? And they go, yeah, definitely. The same thing with karate. Same thing is going to happen. And what we look for are parents who are going to push and encourage their kids to get past those tough points because that's where the learning is going to happen. It's not going to happen when things are awesome, amazing, and fun in the beginning. It's going to happen when things are tough and he's able to get past that. So if you want him to grow his confidence, He's got to be able to get past those things that are difficult. So I ask, what I ask of you is, before we even move forward, are you okay pushing and encouraging your child when that happens? And they go, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, that makes sense, right? And then when that comes up later, which it always does, right, even our best students, right, like even your best nutrition clients are going to feel demotivated sometimes. Like they can recall that conversation. We can say, hey, remember when you first started? Like you said this, like this is normal. This is like what everyone goes through, right? So... Uh, for anyone who's who, who who's coaching, it's the same thing. Like, hey, like you you might lose some weight here and there. Maybe you're not getting the results you want, but that that's all, that's all part of the journey. Okay, as long as you stick with it, you're going to see results long term. And the people who give up, are the people that end up frustrated at being in the same spot they've always been in. I love that. And I think it goes back to the why. Why did you get your kid in karate? Why do they want to do mm-hmm. karate? You know, same thing with nutrition. Why do you want to eat healthy? Why are we doing this? Why are we putting in the effort? And there's so many positive things that come out of getting your kid in a structured sport, right? And, and mm-hmm. eating healthy foods and setting up healthy habits from the beginning. So we don't have to unteach bad habits. Um, as we wrap up this podcast, is there any, th- any tips that you'd like to give to parents who maybe are struggling um, with their kids in karate or maybe parents that want to get their kids in karate? Yeah, sure. So I think martial arts is, is- is the best thing you can do for your child because uh, there's a couple of reasons. And whether you do it with me or anyone, like I just think it's so great. If there's something magical about me or what I do, I just think martial arts is so good for kids. Um, but there's a couple of things that make it different than everything else. The first thing is boys and girls are not on separate teams. Everyone's together. Okay. And, 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 and most times, it's not the case with traditional team sports. I think it's really important where it doesn't matter whether you're boy or girl, overweight, underweight, athletic, not athletic, on the spectrum, not it doesn't matter. Like you can you can prosper on your own. That, that's the first thing. And and uh, the, the second thing that's just like really amazing about martial arts is it's just, you know, we teach a punching and kicking, but it's not really what we teach. What we really teach is um, is the mental benefits of martial arts, which is increased focus better uh, better confidence, better listening in school. And if you have those skills, like especially if you have confidence, the likelihood of someone bullying you or, hurt, or trying to hurt you go way, way down, right? Uh, and it, it's easier to, to prevent something from happening than it is to deal with it when it happens. Just like, you know, it's, it's cheaper to buy healthier food now than it is to pay for medical bills later, right? Everyone always thinks healthy food is expensive, right? Like, oh, but you know, I can buy a giant bag of chips for two dollars. I can buy a bell pepper for three dollars. Like, I'm gonna buy the chips, right? But that that price is is flawed. Like, it's 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 expe- it's it's cheaper now, but more expensive in the long run, right? Kind of like crappy furniture. <laughs> I learned that the hard way to buy my first house, or right, or you know, like a, a car that might seem cheap at, at the price tag, but eventually you got to find new one sooner and, and you could have set up the nicer that last longer. Right. Um, so I, I think those, those two things and having like a quick win, like when, when you join something, whether it's a nutrition program or martial arts or whatever you have your child doing, um, having a quick win where they can, they can learn, get something right away. Like when they join, like, like something that's positive that, that like gets the ball moving in the right direction. Right. And, 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 and highlighting that is really important. And we do that with our, in-person students and with our online program where we have people from around the country, we do it with everyone. Where like when they first join, there's a, there's a process where they get like an early win, like a stripe on their belt. That way they feel like, hey, I accomplished something. I can, I can do this. I love that. I 
Love that you brought up the mental side because you're a thousand percent right. And I, I would venture to say it's not just kids in school. It's a lifelong skill that will help you be an adult better, to work better, to do all the things that you need for, for your life, not just at a younger age. You know, I, I, I did gymnastics. I did martial arts for a tiny, tiny bit when I was little. But the the point is, is you you need those skills to be a successful adult, not only thrive as a child as well. So Matt, I'm so excited to be partnering with you guys. We're going to be giving all of your athletes and family some free help. And if they want more support, they can definitely reach out to us. But thank you for partnering with us. We're so excited for the future with Action Karate. My pleasure. I'm pumped too. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed that episode with Matt and all that he was talking about karate and how important it is for families and kids to prioritize health and nutrition at a young age. I love how he talked about the skills that were learned in karate transfer over to help kids learn discipline and control to all aspects of life. It also improves confidence, which I think is so important for kids. We recently held a workshop for the Action Karate family, and we had some really great questions from parents that were joining us live. One of those questions was parents asking about what their kids should have before morning practices. Saturdays or Sundays, some kids have practice and they don't know what to give their kids before practice. They don't want to give them a big meal, which is completely understandable. A lot of the kids that we work with and athletes say that they feel nauseous that they have a big big breakfast before practice. When we're talking about fueling our bodies before practices, we want to focus on carbohydrates and protein. There are three macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat. Fat slows down digestion in our stomach and we're not able to use that as energy. So we really want to focus mostly on carbohydrates and protein. Sometimes kids might say that they feel nauseous if they eat a big breakfast or anything before they have practice. One of the things I like to do is try an experiment. Try a liquid over solid foods. Liquids are faster digested than solid foods. So you might try a drinkable Greek yogurt or a smoothie, maybe even some applesauce with a little protein powder mixed in. These would be good options that have protein and carbohydrates before practice. We also want to make sure that we're staying hydrated and drinking mostly water. Question that gets always asked is about protein around workouts for adults and kids. Yes, we want to have protein around our workouts. Protein is the building blocks of muscle, but it is more important, meaning it is more important to have enough protein throughout the day than just around your practice. So what does that really mean? Well, if you're having a protein shake after your workout and you think that that's going to help you build muscle, it's not necessarily the case. We have to make sure that we first get the calories, macronutrients we need for the entire day, and then we dial in the details with timing. I hope that makes complete sense to you. You can access more additional free help by clicking the link in the show notes. Please do me a favor and subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review so that more people can find this free help. We'll see you back here next week.